Taylor Haney, single track surgeon, and today I'm going to show you how to install your Cush Core without driving yourself insane. Let's do it. So today I'm actually here in Ridgeline Service and I'm going to convert my Rocky Mountain Instinct Power Play alloy, so it's a heavier version, over to Cushcore. This is stock right now, came right out of the box, and it's got the tubes installed, so I'm actually going to swap it to tubeless and Cushcore all at the same time. So let's get to it. So first off, there are a couple things that you're gonna need. Need some really, really good tire levers, and that's actually more important than it sounds. You're gonna need the Cushcore inserts themselves, and these come in either a single pack or a dual pack, and you really need to be careful that you purchase one that comes with the valves. And if you buy a single that does not come with the valves, uh, you need to make sure to purchase those separately because without them, it's going to be kind of difficult because these valves are special in that they actually allow the air to enter the tube um, basically perpendicular to the air going in the top of the cap. Um, because obviously these are going to sit on top of the Cush Core, so a normal valve would not work. So make sure you get a pair of these bad boys. So on a side note, if you have access to a compressor, it will make the job easier. It's not necessary, but if you have tires that have not been seated and don't really, you know, conform to the rim, um, it really does help to have an air compressor that first time you inflate the tire to get them to seat properly. All right, so first order of business, let's get these wheels off the bike. All right, so now that the wheels are off, let's deflate them and get the tubes out. So something I probably should have mentioned at the beginning of this video is that if you do not have tubeless ready tires and tubeless ready rims, you cannot install Cush Core because they actually use tubeless sealant in order to seal up the tires. Now, you don't need to worry. Most tires and most bikes these days are coming with tubeless ready tires and tubeless ready rims, just like this bike. It just had tubes in it because in transit, they cannot actually ship the bikes with the tubeless sealant in them. So most of the bikes you buy these days will be ready for tubeless sealant, especially most of the enduro and downhill bikes. Just make sure that the tires you have and the rims that you have are tubeless ready. So next process is we actually have to pull the tires completely off of the rim. You can't actually install the Cush Core with the tire on. So let's do it. So the next step is actually to install the valve that came with your Cush Core. And I am sure there's somebody who accidentally put the Cush Core on and the tire on just to realize that they had not installed their valve. Put the slit, oh, shit, I actually put that to put the valve on. Valve on, let's do it. Now when installing the valve, you wanna make sure that the, um, the holes of the valve actually face um, forward and rear parallel to where the tire would be. Um, I'm sure that if you did it the other way, it wouldn't make too much of a difference, but I think it probably makes enough of a difference that you probably wanna make sure that they are running in the direction that your tire goes. So, like this. All right, as with any valve installation, you wanna make sure it's snug, but you don't wanna kill it either. So you wanna allow those rubber O-rings and the padding to do what they're designed to, and that is to seal. So you wanna make sure that it's firm, but not crazy, crazy tight. And then just repeat the process for the other wheel. All right, so now it's time to actually get the Cush Core onto the rim and seated. And um, I actually got a nice little trick from the Cush Core people themselves, and that is to actually use a rubber handled hammer or something very close to it to actually hold the bottom. I'll show you what I mean. So you wanna seat it, and I like to find one of these slits and put it over where the valve is just to assist some of the airflow. 
and then I get it onto the ground. And then once I have that in the right spot, I take a hammer and I take the rubber side and I actually put it through the spokes here so that I can step on it and hold it in place while I pull the rest of the Kush core over the rim. And really don't be shy, pull hard, get it seated, makes it way easier. The first time I did this, I was worried about the Kush core and I was worried about tearing it. Pull away, get it seated. All right, there you go. And the rubber hammer didn't even make a mark. All right, number two. All right, two of two. And you just wanna make sure that they're pretty flat and they're seated well. And then it's time to move on to getting the tire on there. Hold on to your butts. Hold on to your butts. All right, so moving on to what I think is the most difficult part of installing Kush Core, and that is actually getting the tire seated underneath the Kush, Kush Core. Now, one tip I will give you, and this is something I always use, don't install Kush Core with a brand new tire. I know it's really tempting, get a brand new DHF and throw it underneath that brand new Kush Core. It's just gonna be way harder. Um, just seat that tire without Kush Core, ride it maybe once or twice, let it sit for a while, it will soften up and it will make this whole process just way easier on you. And it could be the difference between spending 30 minutes to get it seated to only spending about five or 10 minutes. So you wanna take your tire, make sure it's running the correct direction and make sure you have the correct tire. I'm running the same tire so I don't have to worry about that, but make sure you get the direction correct. In doing Kush Core and doing anything that you're adding components, it's easy to overlook those little tiny details. So make sure it's the right direction and get all the logos where you want them to be. I personally like the Maxxis logo to be right over my valve um, so that I can actually tell exactly where my valve is at all times. So, all right, let's get this going. All right, so once you get the tire actually over the Kush core and the rim, this is when you can begin actually seating the tire in place. So I make sure I have my Maxxis logo where I want it. And then you're gonna take, take the tire, and this is where you actually don't need this. So the actual Kush core is shaped like a wedge and it's got that, that strip in the middle that sits. So your whole goal in using your hand is you want to basically move the Kush core out of the way and then slide the tire into place where it needs to be. So I'm gonna take this Maxxis logo, make sure it's lined up the way I want it to. And what I'm gonna do is with my hands, you can see I'm gonna pull up on the Kush core and seat the bead of the tire. So it's very simple, it's a very simple motion. Your hands kind of learn, you pull and then seat the bead. And what you're gonna do is you're just gonna go all the way around and you know it will pop out sometimes, but basically you wanna pull up and then slide that tire down the edge of the Kush Core and get it to seat. So I'm gonna go all the way around and get this one side attached. All right, so we got the one side seated, and if you actually noticed in that sped up version of what I was doing, there was one point where I got around and it was a little bit tight, and then I went back around the other way, and what I was doing is I was pushing the bead of the tire further into the well of the rim. So a lot of rims on the edge, they're a little bit closer to the edge, and then in the bottom, there's a little bit of a well, and what you're doing is you're just going around and trying to push that bead into the well, and the further into that well you get, it makes it looser all the way around. So now that we actually have one side open, this is the point where we're actually going to add the tire sealant in. Because if you actually have one of those um, tools where you can squirt the sealant into the valve, um, as you can see with the Kush Core installed, it's not really gonna allow that to work very well. So you actually need to get the sealant into the tire now and then we'll start getting the other side of the tire bed in as well. So let's get the sealant. 
All right, so I've got the sealant that I'm using. I'm just using Stans No Tubes, the biggest name in sealant. You can use anything, you can use PDs, you can use any type, any brand of sealant, as long as you know that it will work with the tires that you are installing. So throw some stands in there and try not to get the stands on the cush core or on the side of the rim if possible. It will make this whole process a little bit tidier. All right, so I got my sealant in. So now we're just going to begin doing the same process we did before with getting the tire in place. Um, you just gotta be a little bit careful that you don't squish the part of the tire that has the sealant because you don't want it to spray all over the place. So just a little bit at a time. So this is the point where you may need that tire lever just to give you that extra little bit of pop on that last bead. Um, as you saw, I went around a couple times and I made sure that I could actually push this in to the, the, the well of the, of the rim as far as I could. And I'm pretty happy with how far I've got it in. So now it's just a matter of this last little piece and I'm just gonna use my tire lever, try and get some leverage here, try and get that piece in and then work it into the middle as much as I can. I think I can do it with one more here. So that really wasn't that hard. And patience really plays a part in this part of the process. You wanna just make sure, feel your hand pulling up the cush core and sliding in the tire. Just go all the way around, be very methodical about it, and just make sure you get the tire seated really well. Now, let's do the other wheel. All right, so now that we've got the cush core installed and we've got the tire on the rim and seated, it's time to actually pump them up and get air in the tires. Now, this is where an air compressor comes in really handy because if you are using a brand new tire, sometimes it won't want to seat really well. Now, I will say with the cush core, it does tend to help the tire seat because it is pushing the bead down on the rim. But some rim and tire combinations when used together make it really tricky to seat the tire. So here's where an air compressor will really help. In my experience, if you actually have run the tire before, you know, maybe one or two rides, and you put the cush core in, you can actually pump it up with a regular pump and it will hold just fine. But I've got access to the compressor. So what we're gonna do is we're going to remove the valve core, uh, just a regular valve core tool. You've got those little plastic ones that come in most of the valve kits, and actually there is one that comes in the cush core set as well. So you don't actually have to purchase a valve core tool. And we're just gonna take our air compressor and pump her up. Don't go too high or you'll have an explosion on your hands. You want to go a little bit higher than you normally would. I'm going up to about 45 PSI. And I'm going to then throw the valve back in. Put that core back in. And then what I like to do is flip it around. Get that fluid all the way through. Get the cush core. Make sure it's kind of seated in place. If it's not seated, it will pop back into place with a little bit of rotation and a little bit of impact. And so I pumped them up to about 40 PSI. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let them sit for a while and let them get acclimated to 40 pounds. See, make sure the lines on the sides of the tires are even all the way around. To see if I need to make any adjustments. This looks really good right now, but I'm gonna set it aside. I'm gonna pump the other one and see what we got. So that actually seated really easily. Now, that's because this tire had been run before. So as, a, as you remember back at the beginning, if you ride your tires one or two times and let them sit, this whole process gets easier, bending them on with the cush cores easier, and I could have inflated that with a pump. 
I don't think I even need the air compressor. So it, it just will give you the ability to do this at home and make you not pull your hair out trying to get these things in. All right, so I hope this video helped you out and gave you a better idea of how to install Kushcore at home by yourself. This definitely was something that was a pain in my rear trying to get mine on for the first time. And these just little tips and tricks have really helped me so that, you know, when it comes to putting on Kushcore, it's not much different than just throwing a regular tire on a rim. So thanks again for watching. Throw a like if you have a question, throw it in the comments down below and I'll do my best to answer it. And check out for my review of Kushcore as well that I will post. And uh, yeah, see you guys out on the trail.